Hi there, I'm Brandi Lloyd, and you are listening to the Restore Path Podcast, a place for women over 40 who want to feel good, look good, and do good in the world, and please not be burdened with chronic pain and fatigue. Today, I am answering the question, what are the best supplements to help me combat fatigue? So this is an area that I'm actually quite familiar with. It is widely known that chronic pain can make you tired. Just think of getting a headache. Do you feel like doing anything that requires extra? I mean, anything extra? (laughs) No way. You just want and possibly need to probably lay down. In fact, that's usually advice we give, right? Oh, you have a headache? Why don't you go lay down and take a rest? Pain is fatiguing, and we all know this. But take heart, my friend, if you battle fatigue because you battle chronic body pain, let me go over the best supplements to help you figure this situation out. Let's get you some fresh and energized days. So I'm always a little embarrassed to admit the level of fatigue that I used to live with on a daily basis. Some of you listening may have heard me share that there was a time right around when I was 38, and I'm going to be 50 this year, that I used to crawl around my house in the afternoon. Yeah, that's tired. I also used to take what I called espresso naps to get me through the afternoon and then onto whatever high school sports schedule my boys were on. Espresso naps, just as a side note, is basically eating lunch, having an espresso, and then lying down on the couch, and 20 minutes later, that espresso kicks in and wakes me up. I needed fuel. I was constantly snacking or using caffeine or sugar, even though it was a healthy sugar like a piece of fruit, to keep my energy up and my brain focus up. I was just entering perimenopause and I was in pain and I was tired and basically I was inflamed and I needed help, but I just kept getting excuses from the various doctors that I was going to saying all the same thing. Well, you know, you're 38. Welcome to the change. This is about a 10 year deal. Just kind of get used to it. But I didn't want to get used to it. And I just knew that something else was going on. And I was right. My immune system was in full assault. And as a result of this constant bombardment was in the process of triggering a full blown autoimmune disease. Hello, lupus. Hello, inflammatory arthritis. So pain is a symptom of inflammation. In order to reduce pain and give you some energy, we need to help your body, number one, reduce inflammation. So before I knew how to clean up my diet and discover the foods that did and didn't work for me, I literally was shotgunning and very randomly taking all sorts of supplements, hoping that they would deliver me the energy that I needed. But I was really putting the cart before the horse. So I want to make sure that you're not in that same position that I was in. Before you run down and buy all the wonderful supplements that I'm going to share with you, I do want to encourage you to put your horse and cart in the right order. I want you to at least cut out or cut down the processed foods, the toxic oils like the soybean oil and margarine and basically the oils that we find in processed foods and also sugars, whether they're whole form sugars or the sugars that are found in in processed foods or artificial sugars, all of these increase inflammation. So it doesn't matter who you are. You're going to benefit from cutting them out completely or at least cutting them out or down in a massive way. Now, if you need a little help on that, I do have a free ebook at my website, teaches you in 10 steps how to clean up your diet. They're very simple. It's not a big, long read, and you can see that at thepathforhealth.com. I also recommend that you keep your ears and eyes open for the next time that my restore course opens up to where I walk you through this process over the course of six weeks. You get nice, you know, group coaching and everything. I lay out recipes, food lists. It makes the job uh, a whole lot easier, especially people with chronic pain and fatigue. So now that we've looked at food as a factor, myself personally, I realized that gluten, soy, and dairy, they weren't the friends that I thought they were, even in the healthy forms that I was eating them in. Um, We need to figure that out for you. But in the meantime, asking the big questions, what else brings on fatigue and supports inflammation in the body? How about lack of water? 
Dehydration is often in the mix when fatigue is on the table. Most Americans are dehydrated. It's just how busy we are, I think. And with the advent of juices and fancy coffees and drinks and whatever, just people just literally don't like the taste of water. But be sure that you get in at least 50% of your own body weight in ounces. So, you know, if you weigh 150 pounds, then that's 75 ounces of water. And make up for any diuretic drinks that you consume throughout the day. Diuretics are, uh, they pull water out of your body. So we're talking alcohol, soda, concentrated fruit juice, and other caffeinated drinks. So for every eight ounces of a diuretic, you need to consume an extra ounces of, 12, of, of water, an extra 12 ounces of water. So for an eight ounce coffee, you're going to drink 12 more ounces of water. That's above and beyond your half body weight ounce goal. Now, moving back towards foods, cer certain foods do increase energy. Of course, uh, the way back, way back in the day when I was looking for energy from foods, I was looking in all the wrong areas. I was going for carbs, but as my students learn in my courses and in my groups, carbs burn fast and they only burn for a little bit. They just peter out and they leave you craving for more food and more energy. So for energy, you need lower sugar veggies, you need grass-fed proteins, you need healthy fats from nuts and seeds and oils. This is going to look a lot like leafy greens, broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, beets, carrots, squash, pumpkin, and so on. And of course, we get wild-caught salmon and grass-fed meats of all different kinds of species and cuts of meats. We need the variety. And, and, and throw in there some avocados and avocado oil, olives and olive oil. And don't forget about things like green tea and fresh ginger and herbs like rosemary. And then, of course, those nuts and seeds I was talking about, like walnuts and flax seeds and hemp seeds. Ooh, delicious. I'm already hungry thinking about all this. So of, filling your body with foods that energize and nourish is one thing, but make sure that you avoid the foods that drain your body of energy, things like gluten and processed sugars and refined oils and, and refined fats and refined grains, even dairy and conventionally raised meats, they, the antibiotics, try and avoid your own antibiotics let alone the conventionally raised meats that the, the animals are given antibiotics on a daily or monthly basis. Also avoid soybean oil and fried or packaged foods, artificial sweeteners, and yeah, even sugar in general and, and sugars that even come packaged in whole fruit. You know, during this time of reducing inflammation, I'd rather see you stick to citruses and berries that don't have quite the same, uh, a sugar impact and, and also eating them in the whole form of the food, uh, so that you can have the fiber, fiber and everything. But remember your, your body has to, your liver has to process that fructose, any sugar from, from whole fruits are going to go right to your liver. So we're trying to encourage good liver function. Before I move on into the list, I want to make sure that we don't overlook sleep. Sleep is kind of a twofold thing. When we lack sleep, it affects our body's ability to not only rest and repair from the day, but also detox from the day. And that feeling of, you know, foggy or, you know, you just can't wake up your brain in the morning. It's like, oh, you're stumbling. Where's my coffee? We've all been there. That is actually a sign that your body hasn't detoxed properly. We're full of waste and it is just slugging and slushing around. So it's not only about getting that seven to eight and a half hours of sleep, but we need to make sure that on the flip side of good rest and detoxifying rest is that we're getting good movement. So getting outside, if you can getting 30 minutes a day of walking or some kind of exercise that makes you sweat and your heart beat a little bit, do what you can get that lymphatic system, your waste management system going and preferably not just all in one crunch. Like, Oh, you know, I took my class this morning. That's it and then you sit for the rest of the day at work, keep going. Studies show that intense short workouts are actually much more effective than one long, crazy workout. So moving, moving, moving. And it doesn't have to be like a break your neck, getting sloppy. Some of these videos that I see posted on Instagram or, or whatever of people barely making it through like a CrossFit workout and stumbling and bumbling, that's actually more stressful on your body. And that is doing the very 
opposite of nourishing and making you strong. It's actually wearing you down, wearing you down and putting you at greater risk for autoimmune disease or any sort of chronic illness. So here we go. Let's get into what I promised you, the top 10 supplements for energy. I'm going to go through them rather quickly, but I don't want you to have to scribble and scrawl this down or try and memorize it. I do have a handy little download. And if you want that download, all you need to do is go to my website. I'll have it listed on there, thepathforhealth.com, and it'll be the top 10 supplements for energy. But the ones we're going to cover are like omega-3 fish oils. Specifically, you can take one to 3,000 milligrams per day. It's like nature's Advil. The omega-3s help produce a special hormone, a little hormone-like chemical called prostaglandins. And we have prostaglandins that inflame, and we have prostaglandins that anti-inflame or take down inflammation. So the omega-3 fatty acids that um, I'm going to recommend you take in the form of fish oil, the EPA and DHA, actually inhibit the inflammatory prostaglandins and create more of the anti-inflammatory group. So I don't miss it day taking my omegas. Turmeric, we've all heard of this. The active ingredient in turmeric is curcumin. This is a very potent anti-inflammatory herb. I definitely take it daily in doses from 500 to 3,000 milligrams a day based on your energy levels. Maybe you're fighting a cold. Maybe you had a crazy workout. You're feeling stressed. You get to use your head on this. Moving on, B vitamins. There's so many B vitamins and people who have immune or inflammation issues are often very low or deficient in a wide variety of B vitamins. So I prefer a nice B vitamin that's methylated. It's very complex. It helps me absorb all of the vitamins and deliver those precious nutrients around my body. So I recommend taking one capsule. One of my favorite brands is Claire Labs. It's called Methyl Balance and it contains several different forms of vitamin B, but make sure that this is not something that you take at dinner. I usually take mine at lunchtime, or if it's a day that I'm breaking my fast earlier, I'll take it then. So moving on, I do like to drink bone broth and I highly recommend it. One cup of bone broth each and every day. It can get a little expensive. So I recommend that you get a simple recipe. I do have a recipe in my course, but you can find them all over the internet. Great recipes, super easy to do. Save your bones, save your whole chicken carcasses. And then I just freeze it in individual servings in little jars. So easy. Bone broth is anti-inflammatory. It's, it's a delicious food that supports connective tissues. A lot of us have like shoulder, knee, hip, back issues like joints, you know, maybe in your fingers. Uh, You can also take or benefit from bone broth if you take it in a powder form. One of my favorite forms of bone broth because it's low in sugar and it's a nice clean form of bone broth is JJ Virgin and also Ancient Traditions by Dr. Axe. Uh, You're looking at 10 to 40 grams per day. You can find the links for both of those items on my website. So Boswellia is another great supplement. It's high in both antioxidants and it's anti-inflammatory. And I recommend 600 to 700 milligrams several times a day if you need it. Uh, Frankincense, we've all heard of that, the essential oil and from the Bible, the oils, um, that's actually derived from Boswellia plants. And many people uh, find that salves or rubs uh, with a little bit of frankincense in them or inhaling frankincense can be very helpful and energizing and low inflammation producing. So CBD, I do have a podcast on CBD. You want to listen up to that. So I'm not going to cover a whole lot of, of the effects here and the benefits of CBD. Just make sure that you find a high quality oil and take 200 to 100 milligrams a day, depending on the strength of the actual oil and brand that you're choosing or making your own. And I always caution you to go low in, in, in your dose and slow in the frequency of the doses until you find that sweet spot, uh, that helps you and doesn't make you, uh, drowsy. Uh, CBD is a well-known inflammation reducer. It's non-psychoactive. You're not going to get stoned or altered in any way, but it's definitely very calming, 
feels a little bit like hot fudge all over your body, just really relaxing. Uh, you can also smoke CBD flower. Uh, I have lupus, so I stay away from doing too many things that are going to, you know, irritate or cause issues with my lungs. But for some people, uh, a puff of CBD is a really quick way uh, to get it into their bloodstream. I find that the oils that I take every night are just good enough. You can also find CBD in salves where you can put right on the spot, right on your shoulder or hip or knee or whatever's bothering you. But we're talking energy and not just pain right now. So probiotics, a great probiotic goes a long way towards in fighting inflammation and increasing energy. It's also great for immune support. And don't forget that the best time to take probiotics is right before bed on an empty stomach, preferably two to three hours after you have eaten dinner. I always recommend having two to three different types or strains of probiotics and rotating through them. Some of my favorite brands would be like Just Thrive or Seed, and there's some other ones, and you can find those again on my website on my favorites page. And then we all know magnesium. There's all kinds of different forms of magnesium. Some are great for sleep. uh, Some are great for constipation. I prefer for myself and taking on an everyday kind of way, I prefer um, a form. It's seven different types of magnesium from a company called Bio Optimizers. And the product is called Magnesium Breakthrough. I just kind of like to feel like I'm like hitting all levels of it. It's something I can take every day. I take two two capsules. Again, you should be able to find that link on my website. You know, magnesium really affects over 300 different functions in the body. So it's something that depending on the form of magnesium, if you take it in the morning, it can help you wake up. If you take it in the evening, um, it can help you go to sleep. It's kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like a little helper to help your body do what it should be doing, which I really appreciate because none of these supplements or foods are actually healing. They basically support your body in a way that your body itself can heal because that's the way the Lord made us is we are healing machines. We've got two more to go. Astragalus is one. Astragalus is wonderful. I often like to combine it with things like milk thistle, especially in the spring. It strengthens our organ systems. We need to keep you running efficiently and smoothly. And I say a thousand milligrams a day is something you can take astragalus uh, for the rest of your life every day. It's great for your immune system, especially here when I'm recording this, it's springtime, the flowers are coming out, the pollen is coming out and milk thistle, buying dried milk thistle and brewing it or steeping it into a form of tea and taking that every day is also energizing as well as protective and supportive for your immune system. And last but not least is ashwagandha. You know, when we're fatigued, our cortisol levels are going to kind of get us out of that gutter. But unfortunately that also gets us out of whack and it puts our our bodies into this constant fight or struggle all day long because uh, cortisol is an adrenaline. It's a fight or flight hormone. And in fact, that stress hormone is also a key player in helping you regulate your blood sugar. So we need that hormone to kind of relax a little bit and take a back seat. So when we take something like ashwagandha, 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day, it can help with the, with the stress and blood sugar regulation and even sleep. So as you can see, there's plenty of natural and healthy ways to boost your energy uh, rather than covering it up like I was doing with caffeine and carbs, you know, and just really making everything worse. And always remember the, the seven principles of restore. We're talking rest, which is stress management, eating, sleep, your tribe, that's your community, opening up, repairing, and exercise. We need to focus on diet and lifestyle, and we can't just turn to supplements. Supplements are just little helpers. When we are looking at those seven pillars of restore. So I hope this helps you out. Thank you again for listening to the restore path podcast. You can find me on Facebook on Brandy on the faith on that path for health, as well as on Instagram. Don't forget to go by my website at the path for health.com. Every week I do short little videos right there on the front page and you can see those anytime and keep your learning and your motivation and your support going. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you on the path for health. <music>